Hi everyone. I started this channel to highlight some of my favorite Quake demos and the players who created them. I've been reluctant to talk about my own runs for a few different reasons. Firstly, I don't want this channel to be an ego trip, but more importantly, I'm simply not quite as good as Quake's current top runners, and I'm not producing the same kinds of groundbreaking demos. That being said, earlier this year I got inspired to see whether I could still compete at the top level, and my target was the 100% run on E1M6. I get the occasional comment asking what my history with Quake is, and what makes me qualified to run this channel. So I thought I could use this run to try and answer both questions. My previous record on this map had stood for almost 19 years, and a lot has happened in Quake since then. Fair warning, it doesn't get any more self-indulgent than this video, but as far as explaining a speedrun is concerned, there's no better qualification than running it yourself. I hope you like it. First let's take a look at the history of 100% runs on this map. As was often the case in Quake's early days, Justin Fleck was the first person on the tables in 1997, shortly after the game's release. This run gives us a good overview of the map, and even all the way back then, Justin was doing some cool rocket jumps. The last Shambler kill was stylish too, with Justin firing the final couple of nails as he dropped into the exit teleporter. One very important feature of this map from a speedrunning perspective is that it has three separate bottlenecks where the player simply has to wait around. The first is after hitting this trigger while falling down the shaft. It takes three seconds before the staircase starts to descend, and a bit more than half a second more before the gap is low enough for the player to pass through. The second bottleneck is immediately after that staircase. Once you hit this trigger, the spike trap starts moving, and we need to rocket jump over it to reach the secret area behind it. From the moment of hitting the trigger to falling down behind the spikes is another unavoidable three and a half second wait. The final bottleneck is the longest and involves two parts. First we hit this button. This starts a three second timer before this next secret button appears. Once we shoot that, it lowers this staircase to a secret room, but we need to wait seven more seconds for the staircase to rise up again, allowing us to pass through this additional secret teleporter. Adding up all of these bottlenecks, we have roughly 17 seconds of gameplay, which simply cannot be done faster. We don't have to do everything perfectly during those waiting periods, what matters is hitting each trigger and button as quickly and precisely as possible. Considering that this is one of the shortest 100% runs in the game, those 17 seconds make up a large portion of the total time, making the rest of the run all the more difficult to optimise. Throughout 1998, Ilka and Justin traded the record back and forth with single second improvements. Ilka with 55, Justin with 54, and Ilka again with 53. Nothing groundbreaking was happening at this point. Players were just getting a bit more efficient and making fewer mistakes, as well as improving their timing with the bottlenecks. Two years later, Martin Selinus, one of the original Quake legends, joined the competition with a two-second improvement to Ilka's run. He was the first player to incorporate a few proper bunny hops into the run. They look slow today, but this was pretty solid gameplay for the year 2000. At the time, Martin commented that this run seemed close to optimal and that he wasn't planning to aim any lower. Unfortunately for him, the very next day, Ilka added the first major route change in the map's history. Ilka discovered a neat slope jump up to the silver key, which he could perform while waiting for the staircase to lower. As long as he was back at the staircase entrance when it opened, then taking the detour to the key didn't cost him any time. Later in the run, while waiting for this second staircase to descend, he was able to open up the silver key door and push this button, which opens yet another teleporter 
back to the beginning of the map. Taking this teleporter turned out to be faster than backtracking through the hallway after getting the staircase secret. Ilka's clever use of the downtime from the bottlenecks saved two seconds over Martin's run the day before, for a time of 49 seconds. Martin was no doubt frustrated with this, so he kept working on the map using Ilka's new route. Eight months later, he submitted this 48-second demo, which was a good run, but this was still the year 2000. Proper bunny hopping and movement was still evolving at an extremely fast pace, and after an additional year, Ilka took the record for a fourth time with a 47-second run. This demo had several nice additional small tweaks, like smoother wall hugging and bunny hop sequences, and this well-timed curling jump to keep some speed through the first descending staircase. He had extremely good timing shooting the secret button, and he added a nice curling ground strafe to propel himself down this staircase. He also added an additional rocket jump off the roof down to the gold key, something which players hadn't seen before. All of these extra tweaks added up to a very solid demo for its day, and the record stood for three years. Sometime around 2003, I discovered Quake Speedrunning, and I was hooked from the beginning. This was the first golden age of Quake, with players like Marcus, Peter, Jozef, Martin, Timo, and many others all regularly submitting amazing runs. In my family home, in the middle of nowhere, I used our precious dial-up internet to refresh the SDA page as often as I could, hoping for some new demos to download. I was a teenager with plenty of free time, and by 2004 I was competing with the best players and breaking a lot of records on the original maps. In November of that year, I discovered one additional tweak to E1M6. I realised that with some careful health management, I could just barely squeeze in a very precise quad rocket boost around this corner and through this hallway. In order to do so, I first had to take as little damage as possible while doing the quad rocket boost to the top of this spike trap. Then, if I got the angle just right, I could manage an extra sideways boost after killing the three scrags and dropping down from this secret. It all happens in the blink of an eye, but this trick, along with some slightly better movement overall, was just enough to improve Ilka's time by one additional second for a time of 46. This was a pretty decent run, and it was good enough to remain the record for the next 19 years. But it wasn't too long after submitting this demo that I slowly stopped playing Quake, and the speedrunning scene I'd been a part of started to fade away. During these years, I did a bunch of boring stuff like go through university, move to the other side of the world, get married, build a career, blah blah blah. But after well over a decade of absence, I got wind of the revolution. There was a whole new generation of players crushing all of our old records with new techniques and skills that we older players could only have dreamed of. Jukebox, Chambers, Elgu, Brain, Prasco, just to name a few. These guys had inspired me to load up the game again and see if I had any skills left. The first thing I had to do was completely relearn how to move. Power bunny hopping was the technique of the future, and for old timers like me, it was a bit of a nightmare adjusting to pressing forward every jump and changing the way you strafe in the air. One of the first records I did after starting again was the long way easy run on E1M6 where you're not allowed to simply bunny hop to the gold key, and instead you have to use the silver key to raise the platform. Here I was still using old school movement, because the route has constant rocket jumps and can't utilise power bunnies. I also contributed a short and silly run on this map to the 2022 project Quake Done Quickest Light. We couldn't save a full second on the map, so I did a backwards rocket jump at the beginning for some extra entertainment value. Other than that, I mostly stayed away from the original id maps. I like doing fun custom map runs where you can invent new tricks, but don't have to grind away for days, weeks or months to get a record. 
I also thought that I could give a little bit back to the community by starting this channel. And I've honestly been overwhelmed at how positively you all seem to respond to these videos. So thanks for that. Between some casual runs and this channel, that's generally enough quake for me. But earlier this year, I decided that at least once I wanted to try for a proper modern record. E1M6 was one of my last records still standing, and I figured I would attempt to beat it before one of the top players inevitably did. But where would I save the time? I needed to find 0.7 seconds to bring the time down to a 45. The 46 second run had one small mistake which had always bugged me. After I do this rocket jump, I should have jumped again and kept the speed to the gold key. But I was afraid of getting stuck on the raised platform, so I stopped and did a new jump. I figured there must be a couple of tents to save there. By now, I could also do power bunnies which were passable but not world class. This demo has almost no long bunny sequences, but I figured I must be able to gain another fraction of a second over the course of the whole run with better movement. The three bottlenecks in the previous run were more or less perfect, so I assumed I wasn't going to save any time there. What about the quad boost? It was also really solid, but quad damage rocket jumps in Quake are wild, and you can almost always optimise them a little further. The math still wasn't quite adding up, but I figured I had enough ideas to at least do a few practice runs. It didn't take long for the memories from a lifetime ago to start flooding back. The first thing that came back to me was, the ogres on this map are a pain. This first one wanders off wherever it feels like, and killing it as you jump past the corridor is a matter of luck. Often it's too close and you blow yourself up, or it's hiding around corners and you miss it entirely. This second ogre is no different. From up on top of the secret ledge, you need to hit the floor next to the ogre in order to kill it without exploding yourself. This was another very common way to fail the run a few seconds in. This ogre needs to walk into the room while you wait for the secret staircase, but sometimes it decides to wander off elsewhere. And this last ogre can also randomly move and block you after you open the gold key door, which ends the run no matter what pace you had up until that point. Still, after a while, I was hitting 46 second runs fairly consistently, and soon after that I discovered one last mini tweak which would push me over the edge. With a very precise flick of the mouse, I was able to take out these scrags while dropping down from this platform a couple of tenths faster. This let me do the quad boost as fast as the reloading animation of the rocket launcher would allow. The numbers finally added up. I knew I had enough time saves, I just had to execute everything. It took a while, but finally, nearly two decades after first attempting this record, I hit this run. Everything worked out better than I had hoped. The monsters all cooperated, and I was fast with the three bottlenecks, especially shooting the red button, which was basically frame perfect. This sequence with the scrags and the quad boost is as fast as I ever managed, even while practicing. And the ending is pretty cool too. You can see that every single nail hits the shambler, even the first couple which just barely squeeze through the opening door and the very last nail I fire makes the killing blow after I exit the level. 
Between the various tiny tweaks and the best execution I could manage, I ended up saving just over a full second from the previous record. I'm happy with this run, and I'm glad I gave it a go. Chambers later told me that he had tried this record for a while, but gave up after the best that he could manage using save states was a low 46. This is a 45.5, but even now I know that it's not over. Take a look at Muti's astonishing run of this map on Nightmare Skill. His basic movement is simply superior to mine, and now I can see that a few jumping sequences can still be done faster. We're also entering the age of FPS tricks. For each trigger and button, it's possible to save around one tenth of a second by lowering the frame rate at a very precise moment. It would take a lot of grinding, but I've seen enough in my two decades of Quake to know that if it's theoretically possible, then someone will do it eventually. Until then, I know I gave it my best. Thanks for listening, and see you later.